first item on the agenda, either 2.1, adoption of the agenda. Councilor Blanchett, Councilor G, any additions? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? It carries. Item 3.1, public comments. Uh, Mr. Administrator or uh, Deputy Corporate Officer, there are no public comments received? No comments received, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Item 4.1, adoption of the previous minutes, April 14, 2020. Councillor McLean, Councillor G, any errors or omissions arising? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carries. 5.1, we have a delegation from our auditors, uh, KPMG, uh, giving us a review of the 2019 financial statement and presenting us uh, with that this evening. Uh, welcome, Corey Naffley and uh, Ben Campbell from KPMG. The floor is yours and uh, just uh, uh, some book, uh, some housekeeping. 15 minutes typically used for a delegation. If council needs further, we'll just stop to uh, ask for a motion and carry it to extend that time period. Floor is yours. Perfect, thank you. I will uh, share my screen so everyone can see my PowerPoint presentation here. Hey Wayne, is that working? Um, yes, it is up. Perfect. So hi everyone, thank you for having us come out and uh, present. So we would have preferred to present um, in person, but with COVID going on, this is, uh, is the best way to do it. Uh, and luckily that way you can have both uh, myself uh, on the call and uh, Corey Naftali, the engagement partner. So uh, just as introductions, my name is Ben Campbell. I am the audit senior manager in charge of the Village's audit. Uh, I work for Corey Naftali, who is the audit partner at uh, KPMG, and he's the one that actually gives final approval on those audited financial statements. So we mainly work with, with management on uh, assisting with the preparation of those financial statements and preparing that auditor's report. Um, but we are engaged by mayor and council. So if there are any questions at any time, we encourage you to either reach out to myself or Corey, and we'd be happy to take any questions or concerns. So if we move on to our PowerPoint presentation. So this PowerPoint is a summary of the, the financial statements and we have provided the draft financial statements in the, the full agenda, but it's, uh, we'll go through it as a, as a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and please stop me at any time if there are any questions. So our agenda will be to go through our auditor's report, our consolidated financial statements, the surplus and reserves, and then there will be time for questions as well. So at this stage of the audit, there are a few items that are still outstanding, and, and these are what we would expect at this time to still be outstanding. So that is obtaining the signed management rep representation letter. So that is um, letting us know that we've been told everything that we need to be told and all the truth. Um, we need to have a complete our discussion with mayor and council, which we're doing right now. And then uh, we need to obtain uh, evidence of council approval of those consolidated financial statements so that we can release the finals. So if we go to uh, page three here is our auditor's report. So. Uh, we confirm that we are independent with respect to the village in accordance with our professional standards and we are required to do this annually um, and we'll do this this next year as well. So we are going to be providing a clean audit report issued in respect of the consolidated financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. Uh, what this is saying is that the consolidated financial statements are free of uh, material misstatements um, so this is the report that really all mayor and councils want to see. So a clean audit report. So 
So the next slide there is our statement of financial position. So you need to remember that this is at a snapshot in time at December 31st, 2019. So total financial asset for the village was $15.4 million in 2019. In 2018, it was $12.1 million. Uh, this is made up of cash and cash equivalents, accounts receivable, inventories, and investment in government business enterprises and partnerships. So there are a few ones that I'd like to discuss. Uh, the first one is cash and cash equivalents. As you can see there in 2019, it was uh, $7.9 million. In 2018, it was $4.4 .4 million, up approximately $3.5 million. So that increase in cash is directly related to the Northern Capital Planning Grant that you received for $2.9 million. Um, it, this uh, grant from the province was required to be flown through revenue. You'll see it in government transfers and then to have a separate uh, reserve and schedule in your audited financial statements, all of which have been included. Um, if we keep moving down, we have accounts receivable. As you can see, accounts receivable has decreased decreased approximately $260,000. And really, this is just really the timing of invoices. So in 2018, there was the lift, uh, lift station upgrade that was completed and approximately $404,000 was sitting in that accounts receivable. If we keep moving down, we have inventories. Inventories is very consistent with prior year being 11,000 in 2019 and, and in 2018 at $9,000. The last item there is your investment in government business enterprises. And this is your investment in the Valmont Community Forest Limited Partnership, the Valmont Industrial Park Limited Partnership, and your uh, uh, investment in the Valmont Community Forest Corp. So under PSAB, you, you recognize that those investments under the equity pickup method, meaning that you'll see two, uh, two line items. So one line item will be in, on your statement of financial position on this investment. And the other line item will be in your statement of operation as your, your earnings during the year. So we'll, I'll point that out when we get down into the statement of operations. Again, so total financial assets was $15.4 million in 2019. So if we keep moving on, we look at, this is continuing on our statement of financial position, but we're looking at our, at our total financial liabilities. This includes accounts payable and accrued liabilities, development costs, uh, deferred revenue, refundable deposits, and long-term debt. Accounts payable and accrued liabilities was sitting at approximately 500,000 in 2019, which is very comparable to 2018. And it's just the timing of invoices. The development costs, uh, the development cost charge reserve fund represents amounts collected by the village to be used uh, in future in, to fund future capital costs related to subdivi subdivision infrastructure. And as you can see that that number is very consistent to prior year as well. If we keep moving down, we have our deferred revenue. So under public sector accounting standards, grants with stipulations need to be recognized when the stipulations are met. So that deferred revenue reckon it, um, reflects of uh, funding that was received, received, but stipulations were not um, uh, were not rec are not done at that time and are not met. So it was recognized. It was it's con continued to stay on uh, the balance sheet as deferred revenue. If we keep moving down, we have our long-term debt net of sinking funds. So this relates to. Uh, um, in 2019, that balance was approximately $600,000. There was a $56,000 change decrease from 2018. This is really just the principal repayment on that debt. Um, and we confirm that balance with the Municipal Finance Authority. In the end, you have total financial assets at $2.2 million in 2019, and the village had $2.6 million in 2018. So the next slide here is, uh, it's continuing on the statement of financial position, but looking at our non-financial assets. So non-financial assets are assets that are held for the use of provi provision of services for the village. Um, they generally have a useful life extending beyond the current year. Those items include 
uh, prepaid expen expenses and tangible capital assets. Your prepaid expenses are very comparable to prior year. The tangible capital assets, there was a change of approximately $64,000. Um, this is really a net of two things. Uh, there was acquisitions of tangible capital assets for approximately $506,000. That was uh, netted with depreciation of $570,000. So during the year, the village had uh, acquisitions that included uh, building for $76,000. This was for the sports, plex, concession, and beer garden. You had machinery for approximately $32,000, which was a 2017 Chevy Silverado. And then you had infrastructure of approximately $378,000, $378,000, which is related to roads and paving. So this next slide is our consolidated statement of operations. So it's a summary of your revenue, of the village's revenue and expenses. As you can see from left to right, we have our budget, our 2019 actuals and our, our 2019 actuals and our 2018 actuals. Uh, the budget, uh, the village budgeted, budgeted for annual surplus of approximately $5, uh, $5 million. In 2019, it was $3.5 million. And in the next few slides, I'll show you a breakdown of the, the revenue and expenses on how we came up with those, or how, how the village came out with the annual surplus of approximately $3.5 million. So this is a breakdown of the revenue um, by financial statement caption. So that includes your net taxation revenue, sales and user fees, licenses and permits, hotels and resort tax, rentals and government transfers. As I was as auditors, we would expect that the, the net taxation revenue and government transfers would be the two largest line items. Um, net taxation revenue, we do significant amount of work over recalculating that uh, those taxes to make sure that that balance is correct. Um, and the second item there is really that government transfers. Um, as you can see in 2019, the village had $4.3 million of government transfers. In 2018, it had $1.2 million. And that big increase was related to that Northern Capital Planning Grant of $2.9 million that flowed into that government transfer line item. So if we go to the next, next slide, we'll have We'll continue on our revenue. Uh, so other items that are included in the revenue section include uh, the government transfers for federal, government transfer for others, investments and penalties, and this investment in business enterprise and partnership. So that's the main one that I wanted to point out because that investment in the business enterprises and partnership is uh, the net income related to the two limited partnerships. So the Valemont Community Forest Limited Partnership, the Valemont Industrial Park Limited Partnership, and the Valemont Community Forest Corp. So that would be the second line out of those two that I discussed earlier. So the next slide here is continuing on our statement of operations, but we're looking at uh, the expense side. Um, as you can see, your legislat uh, legislature, general government, protective services, transportation services, environmental and public health, they're all very comparable to both the budget as well as the, the 2018 prior year figures. Uh, the only one that's uh, slightly different is related to the recreation and community development. And uh, that is because there was some new projects that went through there in 2019. That included uh, projects for the Valmont Area Recreational Development Association for approximately 55,000, the Valmont Community Sports Association for $81,000. And then there was um, some asset, a UBCM asset management and different trails that were up, updated that included the bikes park for $37,000, the five mile bike shuffle road for $39,000, and the Cranberry Marsh Trail for $67,000. So the next slide is continue on with the total expenditures. 
Uh, so other expenditures are your water utility, sanitary sewer system, and their visitor center, all very comparable to prior year. Uh, the village in 2019's total expenditures was $3.8 million. This was slightly up from $3.5 million in 2018 and below budget of, uh, a below budget of 4.2 million. So if we keep moving on, uh, this is our accumulated surplus. So we have our uh, accumulated surplus beginning of the year at $23 million. You add in your $3.5 million of annual surplus. This leads to, to an ending total accumulated surplus end of year of $26.6 million. This is up from uh, 2018 at 23, point, uh, $23 million. And you can see that 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 leaves you with a change of $3.5 million, and that change is primarily due to the Northern Capital Planning Grant of the, the $2.9 million. So the next slide here is your consolidated statement of change in net financial asset. Um, so your opening net financial asset was $9.5 million. You add your annual surplus of $3.5 million, and then you have to add in your change in their non-financial assets, which would reflect um, your amortization, your tangible capital assets, as well as some of the change in prepaid expenses. And that leaves you a closing net financial assets at $13.1 million, which in 2019 and in 2018, the village had $9.5 million. So the next few, few slides are a breakdown of the surplus. So uh, your surplus includes invested in tangible capital assets. This will reflect, this surplus reflects any change in your TCA, so your disposal, your additions, your depreciation, um, and it will be very similar to the number sitting on your statement of financial position for your tangible capital assets. So that's the, the um, funding you've used to uh, purchase your TCA. Other items are your general fund, which is unrestricted, your general fund restricted, and that restricted portion is really your investment in your government business enterprises and partnerships. So your two limited partnerships and your community forest corp. The last item there is your water utility fund, uh, which was sitting at 671,000 in 2019 and in 2018 at $511,000. Uh, so there is one other, one other item there, which is your sanitary sewer fund, which is, uh, which is up approximately $42,000 compared to prior year. So the total surplus before, before the village's reserves was $22.9 million in 2019 and $22.3 million in 2018. So it was approximately a $640,000 increase. So the next slide is a breakdown of all of the reserve funds set aside for specific purposes. So those include your capital works, machinery and equipment, land sales, MFA unexpended funds, MFA, uh, so unexpended funds, water, unexpended funds, sewer, and the Northern Capital Planning Grant. So there's two things that I wanted to point out is the majority of the change in, in the reserves are related to two things, which is one is interest on, the, on those cash, and the second thing is that Northern Capital Planning Grant, which had to be set up as its own reserve, which you'll see is the last reserve on that page, sitting at 2.919 million. Um, and as you'll see in your financial statements, there is a separate disclosure related to, to those funds. Uh, Mr. Campbell, I think we'll just take a pause here uh, and I'll ask for a motion to extend the delegation time, please. Councillor Pearson, Councillor Blanchett. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Perfect. Thank you. So 
So the last few items I did want to discuss is that in the audited financial statements, you will see a new note there. It's a subsequent event note, as you're well aware that COVID-19 pan pandemic um, has occurred. Um, as a result, it is a subsequent event. There are two types of sub subsequent events. So the first event is an event that provides future evidence of a condi condition that already existed. And the second one is events that are indicative conditions that arose subsequent to the financial statement date. So it means the, the, um, means the time between December 31st, 2019 to now. So you fall into that second one, which resulted in that we needed to add a subsequent event note in there, which was uh, discussed with management in helping draft that, um, that note. And the last item there is, uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that KPMG does have uh, specialists working on any, anything related to COVID. Um, and if there's any new, um, if there's any items that come up that, are, that would be good for the village or the village should know about, uh, KPMG will definitely bring it to management's attention um, and assist where we can. Uh, the last slide there is our notes to the consolidated financial statements. So the only thing that I really wanted to point out here is that in the investment and business enterprise and the partnership, you'll see that in note four, you'll have a breakdown of all of your um, investments showing the balance sheet and your income statement, a summary of it. Uh, and then the last two items there, which is a, we've added the subsequent event note and we've added the Northern Capital Planning Grant schedule. So yeah, I just want to stop and ask ask anyone if they have any questions. Council, if you do have any questions regarding the presentation, uh, hopefully you can have a look at the presentation from your agenda package and just refer to a page number so the rest of uh, members of council can follow along with any questions or comments. Hearing none. Mr. Campbell. Perfect, thank you. So I just wanna bring one last thing up. Um, it's not in the slides, but there is a new standard that will be effective for December 31st, 2022, related to the asset retirement obligation. Um, and this new standard will take quite a bit of uh, management time and accounting time to, uh, to make sure that you are recognizing it appropriately in your public sector uh, financial statements and it's related to any legal w requirement to remediate any sort of a contaminated site or any any sort of land. Um, so I just encourage uh, mayor, the mayor and council and uh, management to reach out to KPMG if they have any questions on that and we do have specialists working on it and we will continue to send, send links on it. So that's all I really had to add. Mr. Campbell, that new accounting treatment would that be also uh, as it would pertain to lands owned by municipal corporations, but not the village itself? Land the sorry, I'll, I can I can jump in there, Ben. So the lands that are owned by the corporations, um, so those corporations are accounted for uh, currently under accounting standards for private enterprise. So. Within those standards, there would be, you know, management would need to make an estimate of any retirement obligations. So, um, you know, a good example of that could potentially be the similar to the silviculture liability for the forestry activities. There's a liability that's been recognized within the forest company to to get those, um, you know, cut blocks back to free to grow status. And uh, an asset retirement obligation would need to be recorded within those. Uh, financial statements, but they aren't accounted for under uh, public sector standards because they are considered independent in terms of their operations and their their financial financial ability to operate. Thank you very much. And then just one other item I thought I'd bring up, uh, it, just a conversation that we've been having as a firm just around uh, the the COVID nineteen pandemic and and one of those items that we've been just uh, starting to talk about with our municipal clients is is just around uh, you know the the kind of the stage of recovery where we're at. I mean, we've all had 
kind of the reaction to, to the pandemic. We're obviously, you know, meeting in a different way. Uh, we're kind of finding our resilience uh, in terms of how we'll, how we'll carry on through, uh, through the pandemic. But now I think, you know, we're starting to have more conversations about recovery and what recovery might look like. And uh, one of those conversations that's happening is, I think that there's an expectation um, that there will be infrastructure stimulus funding and programs uh, coming out of the various levels of government. And so we're kind of recommending to our municipal clients to make sure they've got projects that are uh, essentially shovel ready and, and ready to kind of go in for application as, as there will be kind of a, a first mover uh, advantage on some of those funding buckets. So just uh, one of those conversations and happy to kind of continue that online, but just thought we'd bring it to your attention. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll be one of those Wednesday announcements and a Thursday application deadline. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, Council, any questions of, uh, of, the audit, uh, of the audit of the audit presentation or or the consolidated financial statements? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor to receive the delegation? Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson. Any questions or comments of the delegation itself? Councillor Blanchett. I'd just like to thank um, our DFO, um, another clean uh, bill of health, um, as always. So I'd really like to thank um, Laurie for a job fantastically done. Yeah, absolutely, Councillor. Extremely well done, Mrs. McNee. If there are nothing further of the delegates, all in favor, receipt. Opposed? It's carried. Thank you very much, uh, KPMG, Mr. Uh, Net Kelly and Mr. Campbell. It was a, a pleasure working with both the audit team uh, this term, or sorry, this year, and a uh, job well done. Thank you very much. All right, have a good night. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Apologies, Council. I didn't realize we had a, uh, a late item before us. I lost it in a flurry of emails. Uh, we do have a request from uh, Robson Valley Community Services to uh, take possession or lease possession of the garden area uh, northeast of the uh, secondary school. Can I ask Council to amend the agenda, please? Councillor G, Councillor McLean, uh, my apologies, uh, that's completely on me. All in favor of amendment? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you very much. Heading, for, uh, that'll be a new business, Mr. Robinson. Yes, that's correct. And, and your worship, I'll, I'll take the blame for that. My apologies. Well, we can share that. Uh, sorry, anything out of the reading file, Council? Councillor McLean? Yes, um, there were a couple of things from the reading file. Um, the BC Gaming Grant Correspondence Resolution, where Hazelton is asking us to support their resolution, uh, where um, uh, villages under 10,000 people can apply for the BC Gaming Grant. I wondered if there was any appetite for supporting that. Would you like that moved, Councillor? I would. So it is moved. Is there a seconder, Councillor Blanchett, that Council support uh, New Hazelton in uh, their literature to have municipalities under 10,000 be able to apply for gaming grants. Is there any discussion around the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? <clears throat> We're supporting. 
Uh, you had another item, Councillor McLean? Um, yes, I did. I, um, uh, the Craig correspondence to Council. I, I share those concerns at this time and wonder how far along we are with both of these. My thoughts would be that we um, should perhaps put them on uh, the back burner until we see what stimulus measures are coming down the pipe at times when people are out of work, many municipalities are laying people off. Um, we have no idea how many people are gonna be able to pay their taxes. Uh, um, taking on more staff and buying a backhoe, um, maybe something we might want to look at putting off till next year. Any reaction, Councillor Blanchett? Um, I would just like to, I agree. I just want to know how imperative is it that we hire another um, staff and how much do we need the backhoe would be my question. Mr. Administrator. Uh, well, the, the backhoe has been on the books for several years. So it, it is a piece of equipment that uh, we really do need to get to uh, replacing. Uh, as for the public works employee, uh, we've already conducted interviews. We've already selected a candidate. Uh, so we are well into that process. Um, and regardless of what happens with COVID-19, that doesn't change uh, any of administrative's con administration's uh, concerns in regards to the fact that we have um, uh, an understaffed uh, uh, public works department. Councillor Blanchett. Can the backhoe wait a year? It's waited other years. As, as we'll see in the uh, subsequent five-year financial uh, bylaw, staff are constantly reviewing uh, what we can be uh, putting off for now and also reviewing what revenues uh, may be upon us as they come in. This thing changes, as you know, every every hour, if not every 24 hours. So uh, surely uh, administration will be reviewing that uh, as mentioned in that report. Councillor Blanchett. Is there any um, thought to, um leaving the backhoe for a year and taking on um, the new position? Like our, if we're in dire needs of a new position, can we do one, not the other? Is that an option? Mr. Administrator? That is council's option, absolutely. Um, you do make the decision. So if, if that is your will, that, that's what we will do. I'll let you know that there are a couple of uh, projects that we have set off uh, deferred for this year. Uh, one of those being paving, which was a quite large uh, ticket item that uh, we've, for, of sorry, the resurfacing of Main Street, I believe it was. Uh, actually, I'll just ask the Director of Finance to confirm that for me so I'm not uh, saying something that is not true. You're correct. We did look at the budget and we're looking at postponing the paving right now, which is approximately $250,000. So we are constantly reviewing that budget. Thank you. Councillor McLean, does that uh, satisfy your questions and inquiries? Um, yes, it does. It, um, it said that we don't know the extent of what the COVID is, uh, the trouble it's going to wreak on our financial situation. And um, like I said, is that there's places where they're looking to save money by uh, figuring out what they could cut back, what, what they can stop mowing, or what they can, you know, ways to, to save money right now. So, but um, it sounds like we're well along in the process of hiring already. Back to the reading file. Uh, any, anything else council would like to pull out? Uh, if you were finished, Council McLean. I was on that. There was something else. <laughs> you're, on a, you're, you're on a roll. Okay. Um, the one that I wanted to encourage everybody to have a look at in the reading 
in the reading file was the BC Hydro 2020 Water Use Plan newsletter, um, where it outlines what uh, the hydro has been doing um, toward the entire the Columbia River. But all uh, of interest to us is the kin, kin basket uh, woody debris removal. The, um, what was the other one? The other one was the uh, Belmont Kin Basket Reservoir Peatland um, project. So I wanted to encourage everybody to have a read of that. Um, at the very back of it, there's a summary of all the completed studies that have been done on the area. And, I, and uh, so I wanted to encourage everybody to go and have a look at that so that uh, um, there's an upcoming public consultation with BC Hydro that uh, anyone can phone in on. We're just trying to finalize the time and date right now. So if people um, had concerns or questions, uh, this would be a good thing to look at before this public consultation phone call with BC Hydro comes up. That was on, uh, that's planned for June 16th? Yeah, I'm just not sure of the time yet because there's still a back and forth between the local governments committee and the BC Hydro representatives. I know we were planning to have an in-person meeting. Of course, that got changed. Yeah. And in terms of the Kinbasket Reservoir Debris Committee, mm -hmm. um, the comptroller had approved travel expenses uh, biannually uh, between the, the committee members in Golden and the committee members in Vail Mountain, it was, of course, uh, Golden's turn to come up this way and have a boo of right. our reservoir in, in early May. Right. Uh, not happening, but uh, maybe I can find a cellular connection somewhere down at 10 kilometer where I can have a virtual background there. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, go take a picture and come back and put it in my virtual background. Yeah. Um, Everybody understand the uh, the changes to the uh, resolutions for both NCLGA and uh, UBCM. So with the cancellation of NCLGA, uh, they have just forwarded um, resolutions to the Resolutions Committee of UBCM. And should that convention proceed, uh, still unknown at this time, uh, we'll entertain those resolutions uh, on the floor. Councillor Pearson. Uh, yeah, just in regard to that, in, in looking at their letter um, indicating that staff may need uh, to work on clarifying the uh, resolution in order to meet criteria, has that been, been done? Mr. Administrator? Uh, at this time, no, we're, we're still looking into this. Okay. Nothing else out of the reading file, we'll move on. Oh, Council Blanchett. Um, we just, we never really came to a decision about the um, trade correspondence. We sort of left it up in the air. Did we want any action out of that? Or did we want to discuss it later or? It's just sort of hanging there. Did you want me to make a motion? I'll oh. move that we postpone that. I'm sorry, I can't hear, I guess. I'm sorry, Councillor, I, I muted myself. So uh, go go ahead. Um, I, I move that we um, again defer purchase of the backhoe until the next fiscal year in light of the uncertainty surrounding revenues which will be coming to us um, uh, this year because of the COVID crisis. To the next fiscal year. Yeah. Seconder. Councillor Blanchett, discussion? Hearing none, all in favour? Purchase is deferred. Nine uh, nine point one accounts payable report. Let the report be received for March twenty twenty. Councillor McLean.
Councilor G, uh, massive video uh, lag there. Any questions on the uh, accounts payable? Hearing none, all in favor, receipt. Carries. 10 point, uh, sorry, uh, 9.2, the uh, TNRD mutual aid agreement. Uh, staff looking for direction that the mayor and CAO be authorized to sign the mutual aid agreement as provided by the TNRD. Councillor McLean. Councillor Blanchett. Any questions or comments on the mutual aid agreement? They get into trouble, we provide assistance. We get into trouble, they provide assistance in terms of public works and or uh, all of that. All in favor of authorizing the mayor and CAO to sign the mutual aid agreement? I got a thumbs up from Councillor Pearson, thank you. Opposed? It's carried. I'm getting some uh, harsh video lag. Mr. Administrator, other members of council experiencing this? Not from what I can tell, and I'm certainly not from this, this side of the screen. Okay, cool. Uh, 10.1, the Village of Elmont five-year financial plan by law number 8, 2020. 20. Uh, staff is looking for the third reading. Councillor G, Councillor Blanchett. Any questions on third reading? Councillor Pearson. All good here. All the pleasures of Zoom. <laughs> and I'm certainly not uh, throwing this meeting uh, medium under the bus at all. It's a wonderful way to meet at a distance. Uh, was there, there was no uh, questions or comments on third reading. All in favor of the third reading. It's carried. 10.2 Public Art Selection Committee Terms of Reference. Uh, looking for the Terms of Reference of the Public Art Selection Committee be approved as presented. It's Council's wish. Also move. Council Pearson, Councilor Blanchett. Any discussion on the terms? Council Blanchett. Um, I'm wondering under 2.1, if we can add, uh, the committee will provide feedback and recommendations to the village of Valmont with the understanding that council may alter recommendations. Seconder. Discussion on the amendment, Councilor Pearson was the seconder. Just, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Blanchett. It's it's just um it just sort of gives us everybody knows that you know um we may change um the recommendation and it's not anything to do with the committee members um it's not nothing personal it's just it gives us the ability uh and everybody knowing going in that it may change. Certainly. Any further discussion on the amendment? Councillor McLean. 
Um, I, I kind of wonder whether anyone would want to be on such a committee if we are going to make the final choice. Um, as um, how is it worded for the community initiatives program committee? It, is it, it, you know, are we going too far here having the first sentence? Yep, we got a committee here, but we're going to make the final decision. Is that too much? Um, should we maybe put it later in the recommendations or should we trust the people that we select for this committee? That's all my off the top of my head thoughts on that one. Further discussion? Councillor Blanchett. Um, I agree. I just, um, with the CIP committee, um, like I said before at, at our last council meeting, um, we have never ever changed um, any of the recommendations, even though we've complained about them. So, and it, it's not reflective of the um, committee. It's just that everybody does have a different opinion, but they're having information that council doesn't see. So maybe if we're going to reword things, maybe uh, council needs to be privy to the information that the committee is also seeing so we can understand why they've made the recommendation they have. A lot of times with the CIP committee, they make recommendations, we say yes, but we don't have any of the information to say why this decision was made. And nothing ever stops you or uh, gives you any, you vote the way you want to vote, uh, Cal, uh, whether it's a recommendation from a committee or uh, as long as you're not breaking uh, legal requirements on the community charter and the local government act, you vote the way you want. Further discussion on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? You're in opposition, Councillor McLean? I'm, I'm not in opposition to the idea. I, I guess my, the thing that, that niggles at me is that we were talking about having it at the very first line. Is that correct, Councillor Blanchet? Yeah, that's just where we put it. I mean, we can look into this and if, if you think there's a better place to put it, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I just don't, <laughs> I, I just didn't like the idea of it being, okay, here's the terms of reference. The very first thing that we're telling you is that you are not the bottom line on this. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, it's yeah. more like a, I, would have, I would hope that it could be put near the bottom as kind of a disclaimer where, um, <laughs> Your opinions uh, may not be the opinions of the, you know what I mean, at the bottom kind of as a disclaimer at the end rather than at the beginning. What about I don't if know. we had a 2.7? Uh, if I could just steer you towards, I mean, we're, st we're still voting on the amendment here. I asked for an all in, all in favor. Um, I'll just steer you towards the very first item established to a provide advice and recommendations. The recommendation, we can get a recommendation from staff all day long and we can still vote against it. Okay. Yeah. So because on my video is lagging, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the question again. All in favor of the amendment. Opposed, the amendment carries. F further discussion on the motion as amended. We've made an amendment, we've closed that up. We're now talking about the motion as amended. Hearing, hearing none, seeing none, nobody's moving. Uh, all in favor. Opposed. Carries. 
Thank you. That was a good discussion. Uh, council reports. Oh, I forgot to send that to Ms. Shepard. Councilor Blanchett, what did you get up to? Um, okay. uh, the 16th, we had a housing meeting. And what the committee decided to do was to have rotating chairs to give everybody some experience with it. And we all thought that was a really great idea. So we're looking forward to that for our next meeting. And I had on the 22nd, I had the committee of the whole meeting with all of you, which was really, really great. I've gotten positive feedback. Um, it was a really good discussion that we had with some really fabulous outcomes. That's it. Councillor G. I, and, and sorry, uh, Councillor Blanchett, I, I like that rotating chair. Mm -hmm. Councillor uh, G. Yeah, um, other than all the emails that are sent to read all the time, uh, I have attended the committee of the whole on the 22nd, and that's the only meeting that I have to report. Thank you. Right. Councillor McLean. The same here. The the committee of the whole meeting was all I had for council business. Uh, Councillor Pearson. Uh, I as well had the council or committee of the whole meeting on the twenty second. Uh, on the twenty seventh, had a small stakeholder meeting, um, just discussing. Um, the results of the committee of the whole and uh, some preliminary uh, questions. Also on the 27th, I sat in on the uh, TOTA webinar on uh, tourism resiliency program. Some really, really good information. And uh, yeah, there's a ton of resources there for uh, the local tourism in industry to uh, access. And uh, this afternoon had a tourism Belmont meeting. That's my two weeks. That's the third instant in the last hour that I've heard resiliency, Councillor Pearson. It might be a, a word to be used in uh, the uh, initiative that Tourism Valmount is currently looking at. Yeah, good point. Uh, on the 21st, no wait, it's just last week. On the 15th uh, business support uh, webinar, a uh, round table rather, with uh, CDI and Community Futures. Uh, later that day, uh, I had a virtual VARDA meeting. Uh, 16th, had a weekly call with Minister Robinson and Municipal Affairs, as well as the uh, Regional District Free Support Board meeting, a uh, regular board meeting uh, via uh, teleconference. Uh, the 17th, uh, a weekly check-in with uh, MLA Bond. Uh, the 19th Sunday uh, had our bi-weekly uh, RMI Zoom meeting with uh, mayors from all the resort municipalities. Uh, some really neat uh, initial, I would say immediate uh, measures that they're, they've put into place uh, as we as we get out of that immediate phase, getting into that short term, looking at the long term, hoping to hear more of that uh, at the next meeting. Uh, weekly check in on the 21st with our emergency services uh, committee of the whole on the 22nd. Uh, call in with uh, Mountain Resource Branch, uh, Mr. Hunter on the 23rd. Uh, weekly briefing with Minister Robinson on the 23rd. Uh, a quick update from VGDR on the, also on the 23rd, followed by uh, a weekly uh, briefing with uh, MLA Bond and the and the the Corridor 16 crew. I'll call. Uh, and uh, yeah, the the total uh, briefing on the 27th with the uh, tourism. Uh, resiliency re and recovery not just a, a financial or or, or uh, sort of ass uh, assistance or recovery but they're also offering 
uh, like a, a, a mental wellness check-in. So uh, tourism operators who are just overwhelmed, unclear, confused, unhappy, uh, they're able to uh, reach out to reps at the at the at, at Tota and just have a chat. Just a uh, yeah, I I thought that was really cool portion of it. And then today, uh, the final installment of uh, bridging the economy with CDI and community futures. It was fairly well attended throughout uh, the Mackenzie to Valmont corridor, uh, the Prince George Chamber. Uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, Dr. Helseth will be uh, reviewing his notes and, and then uh, getting that out to us all of what, uh, what the three sessions kind of look like. And then again, uh, weekly check-in uh, today uh, with Dr. Markham, uh, some neat initiatives coming out of that, uh, especially around the uh, pre-triage kind of uh, roll up to emergency to the emergency room uh, and some of the uh, new protective infrastructure that they're looking to install. And that's it for me. Any questions, council? Hearing none, all in favor of receipt of council reports. You're all frozen to me, so I can't see any hands. Oh, there's a thumbs up from Council Pearson. Anyone else can give me a reaction. There's one from Councillor G. Thank you very much. All in favor of receipt, uh, receipt of council reports. Well, there's a clap from Councillor McLean. Thank you. There's the second from Councillor G and Pearson. Are there any opposed? It is carried. New business, 12.1. Uh, we have a request from uh, Robson Valley Community Services to take on a, a lease of the uh, garden area uh, near the high school. Uh, Mr. Robinson, would you like to start off with a briefing, please? Should I be recusing myself? And how do I do that um, when I'm at home? Oh, uh, it's it, it's not a should, Councillor. We'll just leave it to you to recuse yourself or not. Um, it's your I, call. I can put uh, Councillor Blanchette into the waiting room. Oh Ooh. well, is there wine in the waiting room? Unfortunately, <laughs> not. Okay, yeah. How, put me in the waiting room, please. Okay. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so RVCS has an interest in the parcel of land that we, that the village owns uh, just adjacent to the high school. And it was commonly known as the community garden and had a lease agreement with the um, with the high school. Uh, that lease agreement or a license to occupy agreement expired in 2018 and was never renewed. So uh, that piece of land is sitting there um, unused um, and also in disrepair, I'll add. Uh, so RVCS has an interest in taking on that project and, and basically creating another uh, community garden or reviving the community, community garden uh, and they would need to have a, a license to occupy. In order for us to be able to do that, uh, we would have to go through the proper uh, advertising channels because we would be uh, disposing of property per se. Uh, and then there would be a, a lease agreement uh, that would go along with that with uh, various, um, uh, various measures such as insurance and uh, expectations of how the, uh, the area was maintained. Was there any... Uh 
money is exchanged with the previous lease? One dollar a year. Just to keep it legal. That's right. I just realized, sorry, I probably should be put in the waiting room as well, even though I don't know anything about this. <laughs> um, I am an employee of RBCS and I'm sitting here thinking, oh yeah, I should probably be put in the waiting room as well. So you guys can vote. Thanks very much, Councillor. <laughs> All right, here you go. But now you're up to speed. Yeah. Uh, just us three. What's uh, what's council's wish, or uh, any questions of the administrator? If you I have might. something, yes, please. Uh, just that uh, we would be bringing the lease back to council for for your uh, review because it wouldn't be appropriate for us to just say we're going to sign a lease agreement with them without you having the ability to look at it. So at this time, what you would be just what you would be at what we would be asking or RBCS would be asking is just the ability to utilize that piece of land in the time being. We could have them utilize it as volunteers, uh, basically cleaning it up on behalf of the village. And then uh, at the next meeting, we'll bring back the uh, lease agreement to council. And are volunteers under the umbrella of the village covered by our work safe? Yes, they are. Well, they're covered by our insurance. Okay. Council, any any discuss any uh, questions for the administrator? Uh, not questions so much as uh, move a recommendation. And that would be to proceed with the formation of a municipal license of occupation for RVCS in the area commonly known as the community gardens? <laughs> that would be one way of wording it, yes. <laughs> and, and to bring it to council. Correct. Oh. Is there a seconder? I second that. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Mr. Administrator, you have everything you need from that? Yes, all I need is the decision. And all in favor? In favor. Councilor Pearson? I'm in favor. Excellent, thank you very much. It is carried. We can bring the other members of council out of the waiting room. Done. There we go. Yay. Thank you. Everybody moved. Out of out of detention. So uh, the council is proceeding with the lease agreement, uh, directing staff to present a lease agreement and bring it back to council. Perfect. Uh, there is uh, not. We're not going into in camera this evening, so I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. One second. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Happy you'll birthday. Get, you'll get your birthday cake later. Uh, th Happy thank you birthday. very much. And I move adjournment. And it is. And we are adjourned at uh, 2003. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, thank you. I have some technical. Thank you, everybody.